who have also been some strong influences um, from a, I guess, more sports physio point of view since working in elite sport over the last few years? Yeah, no, it's always a good question, always a, a good one to reflect on, certainly where your learnings come from. Um, but I've been really lucky to work with some great physios across the board at, at Essendon predominantly. Um, from the get-go, I had uh, Myron Jones, who's now the head physio at Melbourne Storm, and Callum Ball, who's uh, he's head physio at Cronulla Sharks at the moment after being at G- GWS for a few years. And both of those guys was a really great insight into um, the very sort of uh, good operators, but really strength-based physios. So kept things reasonably simple when it comes to rehab and, and not sort of get caught down rabbit holes. And as a new physio coming into elite sport, probably thinking, you know, seeing shiny things and trying to do different things, they were really good at just, you know, keeping things simple and, and pushing the players on to, to be really strong. Um, Peter Blanche worked with for a year there, who then followed on to Brisbane. Um, obviously, Peter's known for his his work around, you know, loading kicked chronic predominantly. For a physios listening in that might be studying or early on in their career, um, there's a fair bit to learn, particularly if you want to work in elite sport and you, and you need to be across, like you mentioned, from a rehab point of view, strength, conditioning, sports science, and then, all, of course, your, your physio craft. Where, did, where would you recommend starting um, with those different disciplines? Yeah, it's a good one. Like, it's funny if it goes a different way to a few of the early physios, let's say, I work with that were really, you know, finesse about one or two little things around whether it was, you know, that would really influence the way I practice and, and change probably what I'm doing today. So thankful and lucky for the guys I have worked with through that time. Uh, if I was a younger physio now, I think first and foremost, it's just about getting exposure. Like, the greater amount of exposure you can have in a sports setting, the better. And, uh, I mean, we're hiring at Essendon at the moment and, you know, you'd like to see just the fact that someone has embedded himself within a program, whether that's a, typically a semi-professional program, VFL, uh, Waffle, TAC, or that's in the football s- sphere, but um, both to show that, they've, that they're that they keen and willingness to actually, because we know it's hard from a time point of view to get there in the afternoons and do that. So it shows an element of work ethic and passion. So as a physiotherapist, what what would be those like key pillars, if you like, to be able to work in elite sport? Do you think while you are gaining experience at local community level or elite sport, what would be some key areas to knuckle down and get really good at first before going into other different modalities? Yep, yep. Uh, I think, um, as I said, alluded to before, probably some of that, the ability to have attention to detail in, in coaching and picking up subtle changes in sport. So for me, that applies to just being really clear and systematic in your process of like screening in quotation marks, but just in assessing an athlete or the person in front of you. Um, you know, if you're looking at say hip range of motion and hip strength, but what, what balance does that have and what are you taking away from that and how are you then going to implement a program and change or, or to optimize? Um, so I guess just doing those simple things well around being systematic in your assessment and attention to detail and coach. What about from a rehab point of view or reconditioning? What are some overarching uh, principles um, that you see from a rehab point of view? Yeah. Uh, obviously, you could talk through rehab uh, principles and processes and for ages. It could be, uh, and people do, uh, and really hone in on that. And But I guess trying to uh, keep it pretty succinct and, and sharp for our chat today, I guess I touched on it before, but, you know, correcting having correct load for the injured tissue with respect to pathology early is, is important. So whether that's calf or hamstring, knowing when and how to load that tissue to get, um, you know, one, an optimal repair, but two, uh, some resilient around that tissue that we're not going to um, encounter the same sort of issues again. Um, first and foremost, I think being really onto correcting what you think are the contributing factors. Yeah, introduce us to sports map, mate. Is that a, that's a, a good segue for it? With your passion for for continual <laughs> development, is that how sports map came to be? Uh, uh, yeah, nice. Thanks, mate. <laughs> nice plug with uh, sports map. But yeah, look, sports map is it's certainly like yourself. I think it started as a, a with uh, prepare like a pro, largely a, a passion thing for me. It was, uh, and I, I talk about this at the courses that we run occasionally about. Um, how it all started and it was purely just based on um, a real desire for me to learn more and get as much exposure to sports physio as I could and I wanted to see more practical things I wanted to delve a little bit deeper into certain conditions um, and the courses we're going to back then were, were not that and probably a bit bland and a bit dry and 
Uh, then we just started creating our own course essentially. So I got Anthony Hogan, who's a groin expert over to Perth and, and put a course together there and uh, with him. And it sort of just went from strength to strength from there. And um, it grew, grew a little again when I moved to Melbourne and um, ran some different courses. We've had uh, some fantastic set of speakers 